Um, so I get just a, just a little bit of background information. I lived in South Korea as a teacher um, for a year and a half in 2013. Um, and then I also used to do volunteer work with an inner city mission here where I live in Canada right now. So that's a little background information about this dream. So I wrote it all down for you and I'll just read what I have written. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can't remember exactly how the dream started. Um, like I said, I dream at least seven dreams a night and I remember almost all of them, but they kind of just flow into one another. So, um, essentially what happened was I was in an underground subway in Korea Um, I was wearing a backpack and I'm wandering around this subway station and I get to this certain area. Um, It's kind of like tucked away from the rest of the um, subway system. It looks like an alcove or like the top of a stairway that you would find in a high school. Um, And when I was thinking back on it, it reminded me of the high school that I actually grew up going to. So we had these like little areas, stairwells, I guess, where people could hang out at the top. So um, in this alcove, there was a group of young girls in set up in camping tents. Um, and as I'm looking at these girls, I recognize that they're a group of girls that I used to mentor when I was working at uh, that inner city mission. It's called The Bridge. Um, the So, yeah, they're in the tent. It's raining in this hallway alcove in the subway. Um, and they're laughing in the tent. They're having a good time. Um, and I recognize that we're there as part of a youth group retreat. And we're just hanging out, doing our own thing. Um, Then all of a sudden I have to leave for whatever reason. And I'm no longer in the alcove. And I'm back in the Korean subway station. Um, But I know that I need to get back to these girls because I'm chaperoning them. But I'm not panicked. I'm not worried. I just know that I need to get back to them. So I'm trying to make my way through the Korean subway station to get back to these girls. And then I see one of my friends from the bridge, who I know in real life. His name is Brandon. And he's with another guy who doesn't exist. I just made him up. In my life, in my brain. I don't know who he is. Um, And I'm really excited to see them. I asked them for some help getting back to the girls. And so we start taking different train routes, trying to get back to that alcove area that the girls are in their tents. Um, I'm chatting with Brandon and the made-up guy. We're having a really good time. Um, I'm flirting with the made-up guy. We're really vibing. Um, and then all of a sudden my girls show up and they are dressed to the nines. They've got their hair done up, their makeup. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Um, their hair's also, I guess, been dyed blue and purple. Um, I ask where they're going. I know that they're trying to sneak out. Um, they try to avoid answering me, but I cut them off and I say, no, you have 20 minutes to get back to your tents. I don't tell them that there's a consequence, but I think it's implied in my dream. I just kind of know that there's a consequence implied. Um, so they go away and Brandon and the made up dude and myself are still trying to get back to these tents and we get to the spot where the tents should be, but it's not actually, the tents aren't there and it's a different place. Um, it looks like a furnace room. There are metal wheels. It's steamy. Um, and I say to Brandon, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. Uh, we pull out a map and technically we're in the right place, but I find out that we went west instead of going east so we're we're in the right spot but we are just in the wrong direction i don't know if that makes sense in my dream it made sense but <laughs> um so i realize that we're in the wrong place i know how to get back um because i'm familiar with korean subway trains and i know how to take them and i say um they don't have to go with me any further i can get my get back on my own and then they just disappear um and i make it back to the right spot and the girls are back in their tents um In my dream, I was surprised because I thought that they would have stayed out, but I tell them that they're glad that I tell them I'm glad that they're back. Then I text Brandon and I tell him I had a really good time hanging out with him. And I ask that if ask him to give me the random made up guy's number because I thought he was cute and I want to text him. (laughs) Yeah, I I told my dream, this dream to my husband. and He was like, of course, you were dreaming about somebody else. (laughs) So then all of a sudden I'm in a different space. It's a continuation of the dream. I'm in a room with a bunch of different tables that have books on them. And we are expected to read these books to different people. Um, It's crowded. There's lots of different people in there. And then an old man is also in the room, but he brought his own book. But it's not a book. It's a flask of gin. And he's trying to drink it. But the pastor is really mad at him uh, because he's not allowed to drink in this room. 
So I'm watching all this happen um, when the leader of the book reading decides it's time to start singing. So I look through the crowd and I see the made-up guy. Um, he's the one that's leading the singing. And then all of a sudden I'm back in the back of the room with another one of my old friends from the inner city mission. Um, and he says to me, uh, you should come back to the bridge. And I respond, you know, I was just thinking about that, that this year. And then immediately after that, I say, I'm thinking of having a kid. And when I say this, it's implied that I'm talking about me and my real life husband. Um, and then he smiles at me. And then I wake up and it was a bizarre dream. And I'm really glad I wrote it down because I was like, wow, I forgot about all of these things that I wrote down. <laughs>